same thing, so I'm just gonna start it this way this time. I'm in London today. I had a meeting this morning at nine, and because it was so early, actually it started at 8.30, and the traffic this morning was a nightmare, so I didn't end up driving. I got the train in, which is, I'm not, I don't wanna sound snobby, but I hate getting the train into London. The tube is bad enough. Anyway, I'm finished with that meeting, and I'm just on Bond Street at the moment, because, a couple of days ago, I went into Harrods and I saw this really cute coin purse and it comes in green, purple and turquoise iridescent. And the lady in there didn't have the turquoise, but she told me like, if you're near Chanel, let me go and have a look because the turquoise is amazing. So seeing as I've got two hours to kill, I thought I'd go and have a look. Now here is the other thing and this is what I'm gonna be inviting you with me on later. I am getting my eyebrows microbladed and I'm a bit nervous. So the, these are the ones that you use? These are the ones I use. I use a mixture of these. Um, what does it look like? It's like a mini Stanley knife. So it looks almost like a scalpel, but it's not. Is there a difference between but these if you look two? At the, yeah, if you look at the edges, this is curved. Oh, okay. And then this is a, like a detailer for getting in tiny strokes. Oh, okay. And then I guess yeah. you just mix and match depending. Exactly, on. exactly. And how, oh, sorry, I've got my head stuck to my <laughs> And how do you work out colours and things like that? I mean, obviously, I just want to mm -hmm. match what I've got going on up here, but... So for each client, pretty much we'll custom blend pigments. Okay. It's trying to get as close to the eyebrow as possible to keep it natural. Yeah. Um, obviously a lot of people colour their hair, so we might need to go in between that. And so these would be the types of pigments. This is fascinating. So you like custom make something mm -hmm. and yeah. then, okay. So I've got probably, probably 30 pigments um, and we'll just keep mixing, almost mm -hmm. like foundation yeah. blending to find a perfect tone for you. So I normally look at the wrist you're pulling green you're the same as me we're mm -hmm. both warm toned yeah that means if i'm using a warmer color i need to cool it down so mm -hmm. it doesn't fall pink they should feel a little heavy almost sort of like your brows getting yeah hot. they do a yeah. bit okay. it's the cling film it feels like so it's occlusion so it helps you know when anxiety. someone does that but they don't touch your head and it feels like yeah or just it's like warm yeah <laughs> yeah so the warmth helps the anesthetic to work quicker to be honest i'm quite lucky because i didn't mm. pluck them a lot when i was younger but I've still got quite a lot there. It's yeah. more the it's more the depth because on you know on your website you were talking about you could do ombre. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's the difference? Do you think I need ombre? I don't. I don't. What what I normally do when people are asking about ombre or something similar is um, I do microblading first. Yeah. And then if it looks as though the patches that don't have skin, there's too much skin showing, we'll do yeah. light shading underneath. Uh, ombre I think will be too much. Um, really. There's very few people I do pure ombre on uh, because it's. It's a full makeup brow. Um, oh, I don't want that. Yeah, no. and uh, I mean, I'll do an element of it, which is the shading. Yeah, but that's just to get some texture. So I've been thinking about doing this for probably about six months. Yeah, moved on to talking about lips. I've always fancied getting some lip filler in, but people already think I've got it. When I don't have lipstick on, I have got no edge of my lip, like at all, on the top. I've got this Cupid's bow bit, and then nothing on the edge. And Natasha was talking about having something called blush, did you call lip it? Lip blush, yeah. Lip blush, which I've only seen where people have had like a lip liner put on, which looks really obvious. Really old fashioned. Yeah, yeah. because it just looks like you've got lip has, liner it on. It looks like you, your lipstick's come off. So you mix, you mix a custom colour? Exactly, and this is a really good indication of sort of how fine it is. So that's the kind of, you know, really, really fine lip blush we're going yeah. for, which is just, your lips plus a pop of colour. Yeah, yeah. Tiny, tiny pop. Um, or exactly your lip colour if you, if we're doing corrections on people with cleft palettes. Um, so, you know, there's a, so that's the sort of thing we're going for. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. And what's the pain like? It's not too bad. It's okay. not too bad. The centre part of your lips in the cupid's bow is where you have a lot of nerve endings. So it's a little sensitive there. Um, but once the secondary anaesthetic's on, you're pretty comfortable. Okay. Yeah. She says <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna draw them. Oh yeah, I've got some drawing on one. Uh huh. What's that for? 
that's the thing that makes so it's just to see how it settles oh right. yeah so if we leave it on for a little while we'll get a nice yeah so your nose leaning slightly this way mm -hmm. i don't know if you've noticed yeah. before yeah <laughs> so what i normally do because we want to find a symmetry that works with that in as well yeah This has taken the longest bit, I think. This is gonna be the longest bit, isn't it? Was drawing yeah. on the eyebrows. They're not gonna look this blocky. Is this the knife? No. Knife? We don't use knives either. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the mic face. This is just a sharpie. Dot exactly. So this is just for me to know that that's where I'm working. Okay. I'll do one so you just know how it feels, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's do a three-way stretch. Putting the skin in three directions so we can create really fine strokes. Okay. Was that it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. I heard it, yeah. but I couldn't so feel it. really weird noise, like sort of metallic velcro something. Yeah, that's it. Oh my god, it looks horrific. Yeah. Really? I'm gonna make it look oh. even worse now. It's only because I've seen your work that I trust <laughs> you. It feels a bit burny now. Yeah, the pigment will sting a little bit and the yeah. aesthetic stings a little bit. It's not it's not bad by any means. No, it's just a bit stingy. So does it take two you go over it twice or uh, yeah, twice or three times. Normally twice and then we'll do any like little adjustments or oh, strokes okay. that are finer. I've had my eyebrows done, this is it. Do you like it? They look amazing! <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. There's there's really no, no pain afterwards. Can I go to the gym tonight? No. Okay. No, so you want to avoid really getting any sweat in them. Okay. So you'll wipe over every couple of hours, uh, uh, every sort of three hours and then add some aftercare cream and how how long does it take for them to be healed fully 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 healed is four weeks okay um so i'll see you sort of five six weeks for your control session mm -hmm. um around 14 days you can get back to doing mostly anything um seven days there's a bunch of things that i want you to be careful with so but all in the aftercare instructions which i'll give you they look good they do look so good <laughs> Hey guys, so it's been exactly one week since I had my eyebrows done and I wanted to come and show you and just talk to you about how the healing process has been because it has not been anywhere near what I thought it was gonna be. Before I do that, I know this is a mess. This is my new dressing room. It's my project at the moment. It's a total tip. I'm going out today to get some furniture for it. <laughs> Most of the stuff on the rails behind me I need to put up for sale and I keep meaning to do it but it's so boring and there's so many things to put up for sale it's like really hard to get a good photo. So anyway in case you're wondering where the hell I am. Yeah so the eyebrows I had them done. Did it hurt? No. Honestly no. You couldn't feel anything at the edge of I think this one, it sort of felt sometimes it felt like a graze, but not bad. I mean, I get Botox. Botox isn't that bad. Botox stings more than the eyebrows. The eyebrows really weren't a problem. When I got home and particularly the next day, I was trying to do a video the next day actually, and I was really worried because when I'd done my research, so many of the pictures I'd seen of people that had had microblading, they had like two eyebrow shaped scabs. And I just thought, oh my God, you know, if I'm gonna have that for a couple of weeks, but, and I think it's probably different with everyone, but with Natasha, she was like, I don't wanna see scabs. She said, if you get a scab form, and I guess this makes sense, when the scab falls off, the channel that she's sort of cut into your skin that's got the ink in it, when the scab falls off, it's gonna take a lot of the ink out with it. So she was like, I deliberately don't want you to get any scabs. So what I got was this. At the end of the session, I got a little care package. Inside it, 
is a leaflet that basically tells you what you need to do. And also I wanna say that according to this, I think I must have healed really quick or something because it says that for the first three to four days, you get this little pot, right? And it's full of uh, a balm, there's like a bit left. This is basically papanthum, which is I think what you put on a baby's bottom. For the first few days, my eyebrows looked amazing. They looked really, like you could see all the definition. They, I didn't feel the need at all to put any sort of um, eyebrow product on. If you're someone who maybe uses like quite a lot of eyebrow product and they look quite drawn on, the one thing I should say about the microblading is that your eyebrows aren't gonna look like that after. They're gonna look like you've got amazing natural brows and I'm gonna show you here my before and afters so you can see. Now the problem I've got, and I don't know what I'm gonna do long term about this, I bleach my face and so my eyebrows, has, like they're always a bit orangey looking. So what I need to do now with my new brows is I need to make sure that I don't get bleach anywhere near them. The first day when you get home, you have like, you know when you cut yourself, this is gross, you know when you cut yourself and your body produces that like clear watery liquid, like where it tries to like form a scab. She said to me, she was like, you've got to stop your body doing that because you don't want a scab, otherwise you're going to lose the ink that she's put in. From the minute I left her basically, you have to use a clean cotton pad and I use, you've got to use bottled water and you've got to keep wiping them like every three hours and every time you wipe them you've got to put more of that balm stuff on then the next day you don't need to do that quite so often and i noticed that the next day whenever i did it um even though my eyebrows were were still like greasy is not the right word you can go out with this balm on it doesn't look that bad but whenever i wiped them with the cotton pad there was like bits of like it just looked like i had put some eyebrow pencil on and it was coming off really slightly, but then day three, that stopped happening. Day three onwards, they've been pretty itchy and you're not allowed to scratch them. Now, sometimes, for example, I'll be doing my work and my eyebrow will be really itchy and I'm so focused on what I'm doing, I'll forget and then I'll go and scratch it and then I realize when you scratch it, it doesn't hurt. It's the point I'm trying to make is that the process didn't hurt and they, if anything, for probably about two hours straight after I had it done, they felt hot and grazed, but it went, it was not bad. Now I'm a week on and I wanna show you close up. She did explain this was gonna happen, but they've gone a gray, sort of like a washed out gray color. Can you see that? They're pretty good though, aren't they? Like, I think that I'm so impressed with them. I almost wish that I did it years ago. But she did say to me, she was like, by about day 10, that's gonna happen, that's normal. And then how long have I gotta wait until it? Days 10 to 14, the healing process occurs and the color softens and like lightens a bit. And then um, as over the next four to six weeks, the color's gonna start to come back again. So I think it's just to do with the healing process. So anyway, if you're thinking of getting it done, I didn't understand the difference between an eyebrow tattoo and microblading. So an eyebrow tattoo, I actually know someone who's had this done and it looks quite, in my opinion, and I guess it depends who you go to, but the reason why I never had eyebrow tattoos done is because it looks quite blocky, it looks quite coloured in. And I think in some very extreme cases, after a while, the pigment changes colour and can go that sort of bluey, greeny sort of tone or like a caramelly sort of colour when it was never meant to be that in the first place. But also the other reason why I never did it is eyebrow styles change. Like if I look back to like 2010, the fashion was to have them really like thin and really arched. And then there was the fashion, do you remember the fashion of having like a block drawn in on the inside corner? And now we're at this point where they're sort of quite thick and dark over here and then om almost ombre there. So I didn't ever want to have my eyebrows tattooed because I thought I'm always changing the style, even if it's subtly. And I don't want to be stuck with something. But the benefit to this, it's quite natural. It's not... It, it just suits my face. The longest bit about the procedure is actually drawing on the eyebrows how they're going to be. The process of having them filled in took, I wanna say, 
between 10 and 20 minutes. I, it didn't feel long, but the process of where they actually mark down and like draw them on and get you to, the, to agree them, I felt like that took like over half an hour. Oh yeah, it cost 455 pounds. It lasts a year and she said that in a year's time, it's not like you're gonna have nothing left. She said the pigment just fades. So in a year's time, you haven't got to start from scratch again. She'll just literally go back over the ink and refresh it. So I guess, I didn't ask this question actually, but I guess in a year's time, the cost wouldn't be 455 because you've done all the hard work of like drawing them on. I guess it would just be like a top up fee. If you don't have any eyebrows because of over plucking, if your eyebrows are really fair, I think it's a really good thing to do. Ever since I got back from holiday, I've been really in the swing of not wearing loads of makeup. It's been really helpful, particularly like on days where I, where I go to the gym. All I have to do is put on mascara because my eyebrows look natural. That's what I used to hate before. If I didn't want to wear makeup, I felt the need to put on my eyebrows, but then my eyebrows looked over the top for the rest of my face, which didn't have any makeup on. The other thing I wanted to show you is, you know, before the appointment, I went into Chanel. Well, I'm going to show you what I got. So I went in there and I was actually filming because the thing is, like when you do like videos or whatever, you get to a point where you... I remember when I first started doing YouTube, I used to be so embarrassed everywhere if I got out of camera because any of you who do YouTube, you may have noticed this, but if you take a camera out in public, people are like, they want to know what you're doing and you'll get people in the background and stuff like that. And it, it used to make me feel really embarrassed because people would look and they'd want, just naturally want to know what you're doing. And it's so funny, like the longer you do it, the less you care. You just sort of switch off to it. But anyway, I went in Chanel, I filmed as much as I could, and then I was politely asked to not film. So I stopped, but I'm gonna show you what I got. I think I told you in a couple of videos ago, the, the best shoe I've ever had from Chanel, let me show you, are these. Because I have a wide foot, I feel like my, sh my foot um, distorts the shape of the shoe in a way that's unpleasant. But with these, they're quite wide anyway, and so I can wear these, they're so comfortable, they are, I think that's like a plastic, it's like a chainmail type thing going on. Almost worried that I'm wearing them too much because they're the type of shoe that I can see myself owning and wearing for probably until they fall apart and I don't want that to happen. One shoe that I also like, but I'm probably going to sell these because I don't wear them so much, is these. Um, these are Chanel as well and they've got like the little C's on the, on the toe. But I wanted to get a pair of heels. Now I got those ones at Christmas that David got me, but what's really annoying is they're ever so slightly small. And so if I wear them, they dig in so badly and it's very annoying because I love them. These are what I chose. These have got like a pointy toe. They are very comfortable. I believe that heel is like an 85 millimeter. So they're not super high. I wanted something that I could wear either out to dinner or with jeans and a shirt in the day. These I think are pretty versatile for both. They're slightly more evening, but I like the detail on the back of them. I was either gonna get this or I looked at this coin purse that I think I showed you. I put it on my Instagram and on my Facebook and it's in the summer collection that's come out. They've got a couple of items that are iridescent. You know I love iridescent. And they had green, purple and turquoise so i saw this card holder and i was gonna i was like looking at getting it in green but i wasn't i liked the iridescent shininess of the green but actually in person the green looked better than the purple the purple was quite toned down it wasn't like that iridescent purple bag i had that was sort of quite petrolly looking this new purple was quite um a conservative purple but anyway the girl in the shop she said to me she was like you've got to see the turquoise she said the turquoise is way better than the purple and she said it's more of a usable color than the green so i went and had a look at the turquoise i couldn't get a picture of it unfortunately but it was beautiful i'm going to try and find something and put it in here if i can if i can't then you won't see anything but when i saw it it was 355 pounds and it was lambskin and I just thought, I don't want to be doing this again. Lambskin is a really delicate material. I want to use this as a card holder. It's going to be going in and out of my bag. It's going to be absorbing hand oil and getting scuffed up. Probably not a smart thing to get. I'm going to get these instead. These were, they always do this. I, they always remove like the sticker on the end. So I never know what the serial number is. Um, these were about 500 and 
60, maybe 570. And I'll show you my outfit today as well. It's really hot in the UK at the moment and I'm really pleased about it. Although something bad happened this morning. It's the end of May and normally we get these I say it every year, we get these massive spiders in the UK that they're horrible. They're, they can be anything from sort of like this big to like this big. They're not dangerous or anything. They're just awful and they run really fast. And normally you get them in about late August, September. And it's normally like you'll be watching TV at night and you'll see something that scurries across the floor. And it's it, they look like mice, like they're, some of them can be that big. And they scare the hell out of me and at that time of year i always struggle to sleep at night because the amount of times you'll find them in your bed it is too much it's always on my side i don't know what it is i seem to be drawn to them but this morning i got up it's been really hot in the uk did have an inkling i thought those biddies are going to be out pretty soon went in the bathroom there was one in the bath and i just thought oh. I thought I didn't really have to worry about this until August and now they've started early. So that's the only bad thing about the weather. Please excuse the mess. I've got mirrors all over the place in here as well because this is like my latest mirror that I've got here. And um, then this is my old mirror, which I'm probably gonna move into a different room. But yeah, look at these shoes. Way comfortable. This dress, it's a little bit big. I got this from shein.com that I've actually just placed like another massive order with them because their stuff is so cheap. How much was this? I think it might have been about 15 pounds and that I got a matching jacket to go with it. But what I like about it in this weather, particularly on me, I suit this sort of A-line cut. I don't feel altogether comfortable wearing dresses, but I do wearing this one because it's not too tight but it's quite a flattering cut and it's very, the material's sort of like that Chanel type thick tweed type material, but it's not really heavy. You know, you can wear it in this weather and it doesn't feel too hot. I'm not gonna wear these shoes cause I'm gonna go out and buy furniture. So I'm gonna go and wear the flats. So this is my final look. I'm gonna wear those Chanel flats that you saw that I just showed you and I'm using it with this bag. This is the Paloma Tote. I love this bag. This is actually a really handy bag and it's particularly good in the summer when you don't want to be carrying something massive, but it actually fits quite a lot of stuff. Like I've got in there, what have I got in there? I've got that that you've seen a million times. This is a trooper, this wallet. Normally they start looking battered really quickly, but this is in good condition. Then I've got this little card holder. And what I'm hoping to get for in this room is I want to get a chest of drawers because at the moment I've got this clothes rail, which is a complete mess. As I say, probably like 80% of this I'm gonna put up for sale. Everything, so this is it, is everything up until here. So all of that, that is all of like my clothes. I've got other stuff in my wardrobe, but everything beyond this point um, is going to be for sale. So I want to get some stuff to put on the walls. I probably might even get a rug for in here. And that is it. I'm just going to enjoy the day. I hope you all have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions about microblading based on my experience, let me know. When I was there and I was filming Natasha, like initially I was like, I said to Natasha, I was like, can I film this? And she was like, why and i had to explain i was like oh i do youtube and she said at the end of it that she's going to do a five percent discount for anyone who books having watched this video as i always say that's not an affiliate i don't get anything from that it's just something she wanted to do to monitor interest i guess from this so anyway i'm gonna head off now have a great rest of the day and i'll see you in the next video